Hi, my name is Zach, and this is Bite Size Boot Camp, Practical Skills for Makers. Today I'm going to be talking about multimeters. A multimeter is a tool that helps you measure electrical properties such as voltage, current, and resistance. If you're unfamiliar with what these terms mean, I'll put a link in the description for a really great tutorial that is made by SparkFun Electronics. It's possible that you have one of these multimeters lying around on your workbench or in your garage somewhere and you're not sure exactly how to use it. If that's the case, don't worry about it because in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about them. Here I've laid out three different multimeters that range in quality and price. No matter what kind of multimeter you have, all of them are going to have similar features. They're all going to have a display, a dial, and a set of probes that are usually red and black. The black probe, which is sometimes called the common probe, will go into the black slot labeled COM. Now you'll notice that there are actually two options for the red probe, and this is where some people get tripped up. For most measurements, you're gonna to wanna to use the general purpose plug, which is usually on the right side. The left-hand side is used to measure higher currents, and we'll get to that in a minute. Before you can take a measurement, you need to know which type of electricity you're working with, alternating current or direct current. If you look at the dial on the multimeter, you'll see that the voltage section is further divided into two sections, one for alternating current and one for direct current. A good example of alternating current is the power that is running through your house. An example of something that is direct current is your car, your boat, or your RV. The symbol for alternating current is a squiggly line. You can remember that because the current is alternating, it's moving up and down. On the other hand, the symbol for direct current is a solid line with three dashes underneath. One last feature I want to talk about when it comes to multimeters is something called auto-ranging. Auto-ranging is the ability for multimeters to take a measurement and automatically move the decimal place to show precision when it's needed. For example, each of these multimeters can measure voltages up to 600 volts, and there's really not enough digits on these displays to show precision at that high of a value. However, if you're measuring something lower like 5 volts, there are enough digits on here to give you several decimal places of precision. Most basic multimeters like this one do not have auto ranging, which means you have to tell the multimeter what range you want to measure at. On the other hand, other multimeters will do this ranging for you. This is also a very inexpensive and basic multimeter, but it does have auto ranging in it, so it's not necessarily something that is based on price. In a nutshell, that's what auto ranging is. I know that was a lot of information, so now it's time to get to the practical application on how to use these multimeters. I'm going to go through and show you how to take a measurement on each of the settings on your multimeter. For the sake of demonstration, I will be using the multimeter that does not have auto ranging, so I will need to select the range manually. The first type of measurement I will show you is resistance, then I'll move on to voltage, and finally, I'll show you how to measure current. So to measure resistance, I need to move the dial to a position that has the Greek letter omega. For this measurement, make sure that you have your test probe in the right hand socket. On this particular multimeter, the resistance is measured here in the gray area. I have a couple of resistors that I have here laying around on my desk. I don't know what their value is, so I need to measure them. Because this multimeter is manual ranging, I'm going to set it at the highest range, which is 2 mega ohms. This will give me an idea of what the value is, and then I can adjust the range as I know more. So you'll notice that when the probes are not touching anything, the display reads OL, which stands for open loop. Another way to say this is that there's infinite resistance between these two probes. When I touch the two probes together, you'll notice that the resistance drops down to zero, which means there is no resistance between the two probes. Now I'm going to put a resistor between the two probes. I don't get any reading, so I'm going to move the range down until I get a proper reading. Okay, so I'm seeing the first digit of precision here, so I'm gonna keep moving down. So right now it's showing 0.114 K ohms, which stands for kilo ohms. So I'll move it down to the very lowest setting and let's see what we get for this particular resistor. We can see that the reading is 117.2 ohms. Let's try one more resistor. So I'm gonna move it back up to two mega ohms, apply the leads, and I already have some digits of precision here. So this resistor is 97.6 kilo ohms. I can't go any lower because the next range down is below this value. Sometimes you don't need to know the value of resistance, you just need to know whether it's high or low. For example, I have a stepper motor here that has two pairs of windings, so there are four wires coming out of this motor. In order to find out which two wires are winding pairs, I'm gonna look for a resistance that's relatively low compared to the rest. I know that these windings are really low resistance, so I'm gonna move the range to 200 ohms because I know that the resistance is going to be less than 200 ohms. So I'm gonna place one of my probes on the red wire and I'm going to move my other probe on each wire until I find the right pair. So I'm going to start with the black, 
and it says OL. So I know those two are not connected. Green is OL, so those are not connected. Now blue, you can see that it, the resistance drops down to about 2.4 ohms. And in this case, the multimeter is ringing at me telling me that it's a very low resistance. We'll get to that in a minute. That ringing or beeping noise that you just heard is the next function that I want to discuss. This is arguably the most useful function of a multimeter. That is the continuity tester. Most multimeters will have a dial position that kind of has a symbol that looks like a speaker. What it does is it'll actually ring out a tone when that resistance gets below some threshold. This is really useful to audibly determine whether two points are connected or not. So if you have a wiring harness or a circuit board or something and you want to know if point A and point B are connected, you'll put a probe on each place and you'll hear that the multimeter will beep when those two points are connected or continuous. Now I'm going to show you a really cool demonstration of that continuity mode. So I know that the electrical wiring in this house includes a ground wire. That ground wire is connected to the third prong in this outlet. That ground wire should also be connected to the flathead screw on this switch cover. So I'm going to take one probe and touch the flathead screw on the switch cover, and I'm going to stick the other probe in the third prong on the outlet. And I can hear that beep so I know that the resistance is low and that these two points are connected. Oh my gosh. This is a safety feature designed to help protect you. When you have stray electricity around, you want an easy path to ground through the plate cover or through the outlet rather than through your body. Okay, now it's on to voltage. The first thing we're gonna measure is the voltage coming out of the outlet in your house. In order to take this measurement, we need to move the multimeter dial to the voltage position. And as we discussed earlier, I know that I'm going to be measuring alternating current, so I will select the alternating current voltage measurement position, which has the V and squiggly line. To measure the AC voltage coming out of this wall outlet, I'm gonna stick one probe into each of these sockets. I can see that I have 120.9 volts AC. You should be very careful when you're doing things like this. Be sure that you feel comfortable and that you know what you're doing. I just ordered these LiPo batteries from Amazon and I wanna know what the voltage is. Each battery has three different cells and so they all add up to about 11.1 .1 volts. So first I know I'm measuring voltage and furthermore I know I'm measuring direct current. So I need to move the dial to a position that measures DC voltage. If I look at this multimeter I can see that there is an option for 2 volts or 20 volts. I'm going to put it on 20 volts because I know that the voltage I'm measuring is above 2 but still below 20. I'm going to take a second here and talk about polarity. I know that DC voltages have a polarity. There is a positive and a negative terminal to this battery. Luckily, these are color-coded. Usually black is the negative terminal and red is the positive terminal. So when you measure DC voltage with a multimeter, you want to make sure that your red probe is on the positive terminal and your black probe is on the negative terminal. You might ask, what happens if you swap them? Well, the answer is nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to swap these and you'll see that the multimeter just reads out a negative value, meaning that the polarity is swapped. So to fix that, I'm just going to turn this around and you'll see that I have a positive 11.61 volts. Like I said, this LiPo has three cells inside it, and you can actually measure the voltage of each cell through this balance charger. I'm not gonna do that, but you do it in the same way. You'd put the black probe on the negative terminal and the red probe on the positive terminal. The last measurement that I'm going to demonstrate is measuring current. Measuring current is quite a bit different than measuring voltage or resistance. Rather than taking a measurement between two points, you actually need to break the circuit and insert the multimeter in line into that circuit to measure the current. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here's my setup. I've got my power supply set at 5.4 volts. I've got a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Here is my load. It's just a little resistor, and I'm going to connect the positive terminal to this resistor. So now there's electricity flowing through this resistor, and there's current, but I don't know how much that current is. So in order to measure this current, I need to break the circuit, and I need to insert the multimeter in line with that circuit. So starting at the positive terminal, I'm going to clip onto the red lead, and then that's going to go through the multimeter, and then in order to complete the circuit, I just need to touch the black probe to the other side of the resistor, and then I should be able to read the current flowing through there. Let me get this set up so you can read that a little bit better. I know I'm measuring current, so I've got my dial position set here to 200 milliamps. So when I touch the black probe to the other side of the resistor, I should be able to read the current flowing through the resistor. And as you can see, I've got 43.5.2. 7 milliamps flowing through this resistor. So that's how you measure current. Let's say that I want to measure the current of something that draws a lot more power, like this motor here. I know that the limit of this right socket on this multimeter is 200 milliamps. This motor is going to draw much more than 200 milliamps, so I need to plug in the red probe 
into this left hand socket where I know that the limit is much higher here at 10 amps. The setup is going to be the same as last time, but this time I'm going to increase the voltage up to 12 volts. So I can connect the positive terminal of the power supply to the red wire and the negative terminal of the power supply to the black wire and this motor should turn on. There it goes, it's spun up. I'm not sure exactly how much current is running through this motor, so I'm gonna use the multimeter to measure that current. So what I need to do is break the circuit and insert the multimeter right where I broke the circuit. Next, I need to move the dial position to that 10 amp reading because this is going to be higher. And now I need to complete the circuit with the black end of the probe and we'll measure the current. So we're drawing about 600 and, oh, there we go. It's kind of moving around a little bit, but between 600 and 700 milliamps of current. So that's a demonstration of how you take a measurement of something that's more than 200 milliamps. I know I didn't cover everything there is to know about multimeters, but hopefully this video helped you understand the basics of how to take a measurement with a multimeter. If this video helped you learn something, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. The goal of the Bite Size Boot Camp video series is to help you learn practical maker skills. If you enjoy videos like this, you should subscribe to Bite Size. That way you can keep up to date with what I'm working on. If you wanna help me make more of these videos, you should consider becoming a Bite Size supporting member through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Before I go any further, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, and that is Altium. Altium makes a PCB design software called Altium Designer. If you've ever done any sort of electrical design, you're gonna wanna check out Altium Designer. In my career as an electrical engineer, I've used a lot of different software, and let's be honest, most of it is crap. That is not the case with Altium Designer. It is beautifully designed, it's modern, and they're continually updating it to have the latest features. What's cool about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. Some of the other software that I've used, you have to use different programs to do your schematic capture, and then your board layout, and then your component selection, and your netlist, and it's a huge mess. That's not the case with Altium Designer. It's all built into one package. Another cool thing about Altium is that it has cloud features. It's got something called Altium 365, which is a cloud workspace that allows you to collaborate with other people and do version control. If you want to get a better idea of what you can make with Altium Designer, go follow them on Instagram and there's lots of different examples of what people have made using their software. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, go check out Altium Designer and you can do that by clicking on the link in the description and when you sign up for a subscription you'll get a 30% discount. Altium is an awesome company. They believe in what I do here on this channel and they make these videos possible, so go check them out. I really appreciate you supporting the sponsors and I appreciate Altium for sponsoring this video.